because your presence is like the fresh sprinkling of rain, the brilliance of a setting sun, the promise of a rainbow in the sky. In you, O God, do we worship and offer our praise. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. O God, in this time of worship, give us a new vision and a new love, new wisdom and fresh understanding, so that the eternal message of your reign of love and grace may be known in the world, and increase our knowledge of your way that the mind of Jesus may grow in us. Amen. Well, welcome to this uh, service here in the sanctuary as well as online so that no matter uh, who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship, and may the peace of Christ be with you. Well, good morning to everyone here in the sanctuary, as well as to everyone that's uh, going to be watching from home. Uh, It's a beautiful day today, and of course, for those of you here in the sanctuary, the worship experience is and will be entirely different. Don't even try to compare it to past (laughs) worship experiences. It's nothing like what you're used to, and we know it can be frustrating and difficult. And, but as my mom used to say about most things in life, this too shall pass. We will get through all this together, and uh, there is always light uh, at the end uh, of the tunnel. And we just want everyone uh, to be safe and well, and that's our primary goal. Uh, we do not know when the next in-person worship service will be. The church council is going to be meeting Tuesday, uh, Tuesday evening, and they will be discussing uh, uh, several different uh, topics, and I'm sure that will, that will be one of them. The memorial committee is going to be meeting Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, the open and affirming uh, group or committee will be meeting Tuesday at 8. The historical committee will be meeting uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. And I do want to thank the people who prepared for the resumption here of in-person worship, those of you who helped set up and then also who are helping participating uh, in today's service. Well, our first scripture reading uh, this morning is from Romans, um, the 11th chapter, beginning with the first verse and its select readings from that 11th chapter. And this uh, primarily has to do with uh, God's uh, mercy on Israel. I asked them, did God reject his own people? Certainly not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he chose from the beginning. You know what the scripture says in the passage where Elijah pleads with God against Israel, for God does not change his mind about whom he chooses and blesses. As for you Gentiles, you disobeyed God in the past, but now you've received God's mercy because the Jews were disobedient. But in the same way, because of the mercy that you received, uh, the Jews disobey in order that they also may now receive God's mercy. For God has made all people prisoners of disobedience so that he might show mercy to them all. And our next reading is found in the Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28. 
And this passage primarily deals with a woman's faith. Well, Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. Now a Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. So his disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She's following us and making all this noise. And then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. And at this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. And Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Well, that's true, sir, she answered. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their parent, their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. Here in these readings from God's word and to God's name be all glory and praise. Amen. Have you ever wanted to apologize for someone's actions? Perhaps someone that you were with embarrassed you by their actions and I don't know in front of another person or group? It's only natural to apologize to make excuses for that person. Well, this is, a, this is exactly what many preachers want to do when they preach this particular passage from the Gospel according to Matthew. We find ourselves trying to make amends, excuses for Jesus' harsh response to the Canaanite woman. Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote, God answers sharp and sudden on some prayer and thrusts the thing we have prayed for in our face, a gauntlet with a gift in it. Well, a long time ago, throwing down the gauntlet simply meant that a person was challenging someone to combat. Well, this woman from Canaan wound up challenging Jesus. Here he was. He's withdrawing to a quiet place. He wants to meditate. And he's now beset by this woman, a Canaanite. Today, we would call her a Palestinian. She was a member of Israel's ancient enemy. It must have taken a whole lot of courage and desperation on her part to barge in, encounter, and engage a group of men considered to be the enemy. And the woman throws the gauntlet down at Jesus' feet. This woman who sought out Jesus to heal her daughter. Nothing happens. She even addresses Jesus as Lord and Son of David, which were messianic titles. Here is a female outsider, an enemy referring to Jesus in a way that not even Jesus' disciples had done. And Jesus' response to the woman is to ignore her. But she doesn't give up. She goes to work on the disciples, and soon they come to Jesus telling him, hey, get her off our backs. And eventually, Jesus says to her and says, I don't know, kind of proudly, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But that doesn't stop her either. If faith means persistence, then this woman is a model of faith. This time, she gets right in front of him and says, Lord, help me. And Jesus' third response is the most disturbing and upsetting. Jesus responds to the woman by saying, it's not right to take the food for the children of Israel and throw it to the dogs of Canaan. Whoa. Jesus appears to put her lower on the hierarchy or chain of being than the Israelites, the children of Israel. Now, some commentators want to interpret his comment in a way that softens or excuses what he said. 
but he used a racial slur that most Jewish people in that day would have used. Since when did we ever think of Jesus as all sweetness and light? But amazingly, amazingly, she challenges his assumptions. She seems to be the only person in the Gospels to actually win a debate with Jesus. She says, yes, sir, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus could only respond with this tremendous affirmation. A woman, great is your faith. What you want will be done for you. And her daughter was healed instantly. So this woman took up the challenge that Jesus had thrown back at her and says, that is true, sir. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from the master's table. And she found what Jesus had wanted her to find all the while, a gauntlet with a gift in it. But what does this story, what does this story tell us about ourselves? What does it tell us about God? Well, first of all, the Canaanite woman is a model of faith and perseverance. And if we are persistent and courageous enough, we too might experience God's yes, the gift in the gauntlet. I mean, I think of women in history who have shown, who've shown such faith and perseverance. Women like Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Susan B. Anthony, Rosa Parks, Malala, and numerous others. We learn of this, and we learn of this tremendous faith through, of all people, a Canaanite woman, a Palestinian. So we also learn the, the importance of the crossing of barriers. And Jesus would spend his life in ministry breaking down barriers and walls that the people had erected to separate themselves from others. But in addition, we learn something about God in this story because we discover that God's mind can change. Now, like Paul said, it doesn't change when it comes to whom God chooses. And he says God did choose the Jewish people and will never revoke that. So, but we do here discover that God's mind can change on other things. And this is not the first time in the Bible that God's mind has changed. Do you remember the story of the Exodus? You know, God liberates the people from slavery in Egypt. Well, they're, they're out in the, they've crossed the Red Sea, they're out in the wilderness, and they're complaining. It's miserable out there in the wilderness, so they complain to Moses about the lack of food. God sends manna or bread from heaven, but the people continue to complain, and finally God has had enough. He says, that is it. Moses intercedes and pleads on their behalf. Moses reminds God that it would be wise it would not be wise to destroy God's chosen people. And God listens to Moses and is convinced by Moses' argument. So God changes God's mind. And the story ends by saying that God repented of the evil that God had intended to do to Israel. Well, if God's mind can change, what about our minds? Now, my wife Cynthia would say, Bruce, I wish you would just make up your mind on certain things. But if Moses, if Moses can talk God out of, a, out of a position, and if a Palestinian woman can get Jesus to change his mind, isn't it okay for us to change our minds? I mean, think about it. This means we could admit it when we make mistakes. This means we can take a look at positions we hold or stances we take and perhaps change our views. I mean, I hope we're all growing uh, as human beings and to grow as a human being means that our views are probably going to change over time. To grow in faith means the same. I mean, our faith evolves or develops just as other areas of our lives do. This is why we have adult Christian education classes or Bible studies. You know, in recent months, people have had to take a look at across the country, uh, have had to take a look at and or consider the issue of race and racism. 
Jesus was challenged by a Palestinian woman, and out of that encounter, he had to take a look at prejudice that he had learned in his life. If Jesus had such a view, might we as well? You, I'm sure some of you perhaps remember the, the Broadway hit, the 1947 Broadway hit, uh, South Pacific by Rodgers and Hammerstein. And, uh, it's one of the songs in that, in that uh, musical. And it's about prejudice. Now, I'm not going to sing it. We don't sing. But you've got to be taught to hate, to fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed into your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. Well, up to 98% of our thoughts are unconscious or subconscious. They happen in the neural circuitry, which we cannot possibly be aware of. Therefore, everyone will carry around, I don't know, a bias or prejudice of some kind that we've been taught. Each one of us has probably considered some person or a group to be less than or not as worthy as ourselves. But is there anything, is there anything in this story that would free us up to looking at things, some of those things we've been carefully taught and which may not be true or good? I mean, who are the Canaanite dogs in our thinking or worldview? Are there people we might have a hard time sharing a meal or a pew with? Are there any things, attitudes, biases, whatever, that we need to let go of? Well, this story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman invites us to consider the importance of faith and perseverance, to not let barriers of any kind to prevent us from reaching out to and loving others, to see that it's okay and perhaps even necessary to change one's mind from time to time, and finally, to look at any biases or prejudices we might have or people we have a difficult time accepting. And then we can come to the foot of the cross, turn everything over to God, and then allow the spirit of the risen Christ, whose love embraces all people to forgive us, to let our hearts and our minds and our, our souls to be transformed or changed. And we will discover we just might discover a new and refreshing way of looking at and experiencing God, the world, and other people. That is the hope, that is the promise of this story and the good news of God's love and grace. O oh, woman, great is your faith. Your daughter is healed. Amen. And may God bless us all. And I'd like for you to think of any needs, joys, or concerns you might have, and we will observe a moment of silent prayer and meditation. Oh God, we pray for your guidance as we face the perplexities of the world. Every day we are face to face with new challenges, and we pray that you will, through other people in the church, Nurture us in our spiritual pilgrimage. We praise you for the message of the gift of your unmerited and limitless love. 
And today, oh God, we pray for all those who are experiencing illness of any kind. We pray that you will renew their strength and comfort them. And we say a special prayer for nurses and doctors and other healthcare workers. Throughout different parts of this country and world, many of them are feeling overwhelmed right now. Please give them strength and endurance even as we pray for their safety and well-being. And we pray for your entire creation, God. Help us to care for all that you have given us and fill us with a spirit of generosity and a sense of security that we may be free of fear and filled with your spirit of abundance and sufficiency. And give us joy and laughter to share with one another as well as food and safety and justice. And O oh God of all creation, even as we worship in separate places and at different times, we pray that you would bind us together into one human family and help us, the body of Christ, to love and serve the world and all peoples. O oh God, you have indeed created us all, and we give you our honor and our praise. And now we offer these prayers using the words that Jesus taught his first disciples. And I will now say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Open the doors of your heart as you love and serve God. Open the doors of your spirit as you reach out to others. And may the peace of Christ, which passes all human understanding, breathe new life into your living and your loving, this day and forever. Amen. <laughs> 